Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for standing by, and welcome to the Central Pacific Financial Corp. Third Quarter 2024 Conference Call. During today's presentation, all parties will be in a listen-only mode. Following the presentation, the conference will be open for questions. This call is being recorded and will be available for replay shortly after its completion in the company's website at www.cpb.bank. I'd like to turn the call over to Ms. Dana Matsumoto, Group SVP, Director, Finance and Accounting. Please go ahead. Thank you, John, and thank you all for joining us as we review the financial results of the third quarter of 2024 for Central Pacific Financial Corp. With me this morning are Arnold Martinez, Chairman, President, and Chief Executive Officer, David Morimoto, Senior Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer, Anna Hu, Executive Vice President and Chief Credit Officer, and Ralph Misek, who recently joined us as Senior Executive Vice President and Chief Risk Officer. We have prepared a supplemental slide presentation that provides additional details on our release and is available in the Investor Relations section of our website at cpb.bank. During the course of today's call, management may make forward-looking statements. While we believe these statements are based on reasonable assumptions, they involve risks that may cause actual results to differ materially from those projected. For a complete discussion of the risks related to our forward-looking statements, please refer to slide two of our presentation. And now, I'll turn the call over to our Chairman, President, and CEO, Arnold Martinez. Thank you, Dana, and aloha, everyone. We appreciate your interest in Central Pacific Financial Corp, and we are pleased to share our latest updates and results with you. Let me start by introducing Ralph Misek, who joined our executive team as Senior Executive Vice President and Chief Risk Officer. With nearly 40 years of broad experience in the financial services industry here in Hawaii, Ralph's expertise will be invaluable in managing the risk and regulatory environment as we continue to grow into the future. Shifting now to the third quarter, we continue to achieve improvement in key areas of our balance sheet with meaningful NIM expansion and core deposit growth, as well as continued strong liquidity, asset quality, and capital positions. Given the broader economic and rate environment, Loan growth remains challenged, but with rates starting to move down, we see positive trends developing. Our results this quarter included $3.1 million in pre-tax expenses related to our evaluation and assessment of a strategic opportunity. While the parties are no longer currently engaged in discussions, we remain interested in the opportunity under the right terms and conditions. Overall, our car trends are favorable, and we remain confident in future growth opportunities and our ability to successfully navigate and capitalize on the changing economic landscape. During the quarter, we also opened a new state-of-the-art branch in Kahalui, Maui. The branch is well-equipped to serve the consumer and business needs of the Maui community and will create ongoing opportunities for growth in this key market as we look to expand our presence on the neighbor islands. We continue to monitor the market conditions in Hawaii and remain optimistic about the resilience of our local economy. Hawaii is expected to have stable growth with continued strength in the construction industry, offsetting slight weakness in the tourism sector. The Hawaii construction industry generated $11.8 billion in 2023 a 10% increase from the prior year. In the first seven months of 2024, the value of private building permits increased 19% and the number of residential units authorized were up over 50% compared to the prior year. On the visitor front, year to date through August, total statewide visitor arrivals were down 2.2% from the prior year and were about 92% of pre-pandemic levels in 2019. Visitors from Japan were up 38% from a year ago, yet remained about 45% of the first eight months in 2019. For the island of Maui, total visitors year-to-date through August were up 
were about 83% of the prior, prior year. Hawaii's statewide seasonally adjusted unemployment rate remained very low at 2.9% in September and continues to outperform the national unemployment rate of 4.1%. Hawaii real estate values remain strong. The Oahu median single-family home price was $1.1 million in September, reflecting a year-over-year -year increase of 6%. Home sales volume year-to-date were up 5.8% for single-family homes, but down 5.6% for condos compared to the prior year. With home inventories increasing, combined with a gradual decline in mortgage rates, more buyers who are on the sidelines may be encouraged to re-enter the housing market. Overall, Hawaii's economy is robust and well-positioned for stronger growth in the coming years. I'll now turn the call over to David Morimoto, our Chief Financial Officer. David? Thank you, Arnold. Turning to our earnings results, net income for the third quarter was $13.3 million, or $0.49 cents per diluted share. Excluding the $3.1 million in pre-tax expenses related to the strategic opportunity, net income and diluted EPS were $15.7 million and $0.58, cents, respectively. In the third quarter, our total loan portfolio decreased by $41 million, or 0.8% sequential quarter. Growth continues to come from commercial real estate and CNI portfolios, offset by runoff in the other loan types. Our total deposit portfolio remained relatively flat sequential quarter. Importantly, we did see a favorable deposit mix shift with a reduction in our higher cost government time deposit of $69 million, offset by an increase in core deposits and other time deposits. Average balances of non-interest bearing DDA deposits were fairly flat sequential quarter and remains at 28% of total deposit. Net interest income for the third quarter was $53.9 million, an increase by $1.9 million from the prior quarter. The net interest margin was 3.07%, up 10 basis points sequential quarter. The net interest income and NIM expansion were driven by the increase in yields on our investment securities and loan portfolios while our cost of funds remain relatively stable. Total cost of deposit decreased by one basis point to 1.32% in the third quarter. Other operating income for the quarter increased to $12.7 million, primarily due to higher bank-owned life insurance income. Fully income is impacted by equity market fluctuations and is typically offset by higher deferred compensation expenses. The normalized run rate on total other operating income is approximately $12 million quarterly. Other operating expense totaled $46.7 million in the third quarter, which included the $3.1 million in expenses related to the strategic opportunity. Additionally, salaries and benefits and directors' deferred compensation expenses were higher during the quarter, primarily due to timing and market fluctuations. The normalized run rate on total other operating expense is approximately $42 million quarterly. Our effective tax rate was 22% in the third quarter and benefited from higher tax-exempt only income and more low-income housing tax credits. We believe the effective tax rate will be in the 22 to 24 percent range going forward. We did not repurchase any shares in the third quarter. Our board of directors declared a quarterly cash dividend of 26 cents per share, which will be payable on December 16th to shareholders of record on November 29th. I'll now turn the call over to Ralph Misek, our chief risk officer. Ralph. Thank you, David. Let me start by expressing my gratitude to everyone here at CPB for welcoming me to the bank. I'm particularly thankful for Anna Hu's support and partnership in the risk organization. I've known Anna for a long time and she's an exceptional banker. We're lucky to have her serving as the bank's chief credit officer. I look forward to working with her and the rest of the management team 
as we build out our capacity to grow thoughtfully and intentionally. With that, let me turn your attention to our slides covering credit and make a few comments. Our bank continues to enjoy strong asset quality and acceptable credit costs going into the final month of 2024. For the third quarter, the bank's net charge-offs were $3.6 million, or 27 basis points annualized on average loans. This represents a one basis point decrease from the prior quarter. Non-performing assets were $11.6 million, or 16 basis points of total assets at quarter end, a slight increase from the prior quarter. The increase was related to just a few residential mortgages placed on non-accrual. The classification of these loans related to borrower-specific life events rather than issues that might suggest broader systemic concerns. Past due loans, 90 days plus, fell three basis points from the prior quarter to just one basis point, and criticized commercial loans were 62 basis points, down four basis points. Our allowance for credit loss was $61.6 million, or 1.15% of outstanding loans. In the third quarter, our provision expense was $2.8 million, representing a $3 million add to the allowance, offset by a reduction in amounts reserved for unfunded commitments of about $200,000. Supporting the allowance, we hold a strong level of capital that serves as an additional backstop. Total risk-based capital was a healthy 15.3% at the end of the third quarter, and we maintain a meaningful cushion above regulatory thresholds for a well-capitalized bank. Finally, as highlighted in the appendix to our presentation, the loan portfolio as, as of quarter end was balanced and diversified across customer, product, industry, collateral, and geography, with no outsized exposures in higher risk segments. With that, let me turn the call back to Arnold. Thank you, Ralph. In summary, we had a strong core third quarter, and we remain committed to navigating the existing market conditions effectively while supporting our clients and the community and driving value to our shareholders. Thank you for your continued support and confidence in our organization. At this time, we will be happy to address any questions you may have. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin our question and answer session. If you have dialed in and would like to ask a question, please press star followed by the number one on your telephone keypad. If you would like to withdraw your question, please press star one again. If you are called upon to ask your question and are listening via loudspeaker on your device, please pick up your handset and ensure that your phone is not on mute when asking your question. Thank you. Your first question comes from the line of David Fister from Raymond James. Please go ahead. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. 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 Uh, um, I wanted to touch on on the loan side. Um, you know, just kind of looking at the decline in loans, it, it's it's pretty broad based. I'm curious. How much of that's demand driven versus, you know, maybe less appetite for growth and, and just a timing issue? And just kind of curious how the pipeline's shaping up and your, and your thoughts on the loan growth side going forward. Yeah, hi, David. This is Arnold. I'll, I'll respond to that question. Yeah, you know, it basically is a demand uh, issue. Uh, with the rates being uh, high at this point, uh, you know, we're, we have seen for the, the, the whole year, Kind of muted loan demand. Uh, it's more that than it is uh, us, you know, being being uh, selective or being uh, more uh, cautious about about loan growth. Uh, with that said, I'll say that we believe uh, and we know that as rates decline uh, going forward, there is uh, pent up demand out there. There are folks on the sidelines. Waiting for rates to to come down uh, to move forward with uh, with projects, you know. As I mentioned earlier in the prepared comments, uh, you know, building permits are are up year over year. Uh, you know, that signals that uh, there's projects in the pipeline, uh, and uh, and so we're uh, optimistic, you know, for future quarters, especially uh, going into next year, that we'll you know we'll start to see an uptick in in loan demand, uh, assuming that the, the feds continue to reduce the rates. comes from the line of Andrew Leish from Piper Center. Please go ahead. Hey, good morning. Uh, thanks for taking the question. Um, 
On the uh, good expansion here on the margin, looks like maybe the swap helped out a little bit. I guess what's the the, the right run rate going forward? And along those lines, like what are you seeing on uh, deposit competition out in the state? David. Hey, Andrew, it's uh, David. I'll, I'll I'll start on that question. Um, yeah, yeah, we we were pleased with the net interest margin, net interest income, uh, sequ sequential quarter expansion. Um, about roughly two thirds, maybe 70% of that was organic. Just um, the impact of repricing uh, on, on assets and liabilities. So you know that that's positive for the go forward NIM forecast. Right now we're forecasting NIM um, in the next quarter or two in the 310 to 320 range. Um, so we're, we we're, we are po we are positive on net interest income, net interest margin. On deposit flows, again, the story there has been positive. Um, we've been tracking the average balances, quarterly average balances of non-interest bearing DDA and our interest bearing interest paying checking accounts, IPCA. And you know, those are true core deposits. And we have about three billion in average balances there. And what we've been seeing is that the quarterly uh drawdown on those balances have, have been diminishing quarter after quarter. And in the third quarter, the average balances were roughly flattish. So we're hopeful that we can turn the corner there and start growing those balances in future, in the future quarter. Got it. Um, and then have you seen uh, locally any imp improvement in deposit rates? I know there's maybe some credit unions that have been offering higher rates that, than other banks, but uh, so I'm just curious what you've seen from a competition standpoint. Yeah, as you would expect, Andrew, it's been it's been uh, you know banks have been responding to the 50 basis point rate rate cut by the Fed. Um, so for ourselves, our current uh, promotional CD, we have a CD promo, six month CD promo at 375. Um, you know that that definitely has come down. You know roughly the equivalent of 50 basis points. Gotcha. Uh, very helpful. Um, and then is there anything, uh, just on that strategic opportunity, is there anything you can point to about why you are no longer currently engaged in discussions? Andrew, this is Arnold. Yeah, unfortunately, we remain, uh, you know, at this point, we cannot comment on on this further. Yeah, we just can't comment further. Got it. Okay. Uh, thanks for taking the questions and all the other uh, guidance. I'll step back. Again, if you would like to ask a question, please press star followed by the number one on your telephone keypad. Our first, our next question comes from the line of David Fister from Raymond James. Please go ahead. Hey, um, just kind of following up on the capital side, um, you know, you guys have been focused on preserving capital in the short run. Um, and, you know, with, with talk stalling, like we, we kind of talked about in the press release, is there, is there any change in your appetite for buybacks or, or other capital deployment opportunities? Just kind of curious, how are you thinking about that? Hey, David, it's uh, David. Um, yeah, you know, we we have wanted to, you know, improve the TCE ratio, the tangible uh, capital ratio. Um, with it being at 7.3% today, you know, I think I think we are open to uh, share repurchases, um, but like we always said, it's a it's a function of um, you know the the market. Um, but it is something that we we will consider as uh, one of the uses of capital going forward. You know, we're currently we currently target the tier one leverage ratio, like in a range of eight to ten percent. We're at nine and a half, so we are inching towards the higher end of that range. So there is an opportunity to uh, utilize capital, and it's just a function of what, what options we have for the excess capital going forward. Okay. Okay, that's helpful. And then, uh, sorry, I got disconnected, but may, maybe hopping back to, to the, the loan and loan growth side, I'm curious, where, where are you seeing new production yields uh, today? Um, where are you having the most success? Uh, driving growth, I guess, as you think about the pipeline, and then where, um, you know, like just talk, could you touch on like the repricing dynamics um, in the loan portfolio in the, in the next, you know, 12 months or so, and kind of how roll-off rates are relative to add-on rates? Sure, David. Um, 
you know, in the third quarter, uh, weighted average new volume loan yields were about 7.75%, uh, um, as compared to portfolio in the 490s. So there, there was a nice repricing of, uh, you know, just, just runoff, you know, replacing runoff. Um, uh, and, you know, we would think that the new volume yields would come down a little in, in, in future quarters. So maybe it's closer to seven and a quarter, seven percent. Um, but we still think there would be a nice, uh, you know, incremental pickup from portfolio yields, asset repricing. Yeah. And then as, well, as far as, and then as far as the growth opportunities, I think it would be similar to what you saw in the third quarter. I think the the growth opportunities remain in the commercial sector, commercial real estate, and CNI. Okay. And then just, you know, as you, as you, you know, you kind of touched on, on the margin a bit, but I mean, with some pretty material positive repricing opportunities, obviously, and, and seemingly being able to, to react to the deposit side. I'm curious, how do you think about the trajectory, um, as, as you think about the margin, assuming more rate cuts are on the horizon? I mean, you're naturally rate sensitive, right? Just given the nature of your balance sheet, but just kind of curious, how do you think about the trajectory? you know, c- contemplating, you know, maybe some lag impact in deposit pricing and some of those types of things. Yeah, yeah, David. Um, I, I know you said we're, we're slightly asset sensitive. You know, I, I think we've, you know, over the last year, we've become more neutral. So, so you know, right now the balance sheet is pretty neutral to interest rate risk. But we do see that there is, there is an opportunity to move the net, net interest margin back towards you know, our, our, where we've been in the past. So we've been in the 330 range. I, there definitely is room to get back to that type of level. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, David. If there are no more further questions at this time, I would like to turn the call back over to the Central Pacific team for closing remarks. Thank you very much for participating in our earnings call for the third quarter of 2024. We look forward to sharing our progress with you next quarter. Thank you. That concludes today's meeting. Thank you all for joining. You may now disconnect.